Hey guys, Dr. Ben here at the Functional Medicine Centers. Welcome and hope everyone's having a great day. I'm gonna go over something super interesting because a lot of people forget about this and that is low blood sugar. Low blood sugar is prevalent everywhere in our society. We see it even in diabetic people. They're still having low blood sugar. I'm gonna go over what it is, what it causes, and what you can do about it. So uh, again, low blood sugar is a, a very common thing, but here at the Functional Medicine Center, it's our job to figure out the why. Why is the body going haywire? Why is that blood sugar going low? What's it affecting? How is it affecting the adrenals, uh, the inflammatory processes, all types of different things in the body. So that's what we look at. If you haven't already liked our post or follow our post, you can also put on a notification that every time we go live, uh, it'll, it'll pop up and be the first thing that you you see there, we love going two, three, four, five times a week, getting out as much information as we possibly can. And lastly, go ahead and share this with anybody uh, that you know is dealing with these blood sugar issues and has them going on. So anyways, uh, we all think about high blood sugar and that's in, even in my book it's called Blood Sugar Doesn't Lie, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, we talk about high blood sugar as well as low blood sugar, but a lot of people see that title and they think, well, I'm not diabetic, I don't eat a lot of sugar, so this isn't for me. But guess what? Blood sugar affects everybody. The research is showing 80% of the population is insulin resistant. I had a patient today that was on the diabetes side of things, but when we ran blood sugar, the blood sugar, the glucose was 69. It was even low in the lab range. We don't want it under 85, but she was diabetic, but also having these crashes still. So we see these swings as a bigger problem, even than somebody that's just high blood sugar all the time. So the blood sugar swings, I've got a nine-year-old that we're working on, He's insulin resistant, his insulin was well over 100, don't want it over seven, and we started testing blood sugar and we had it down at, uh, in the 50s at one point and over 165. So super big swings, those swings are more damaging than anything else, even high or low all the time. The swings is what causes this inflammation, causes a lot of the damage that goes through the body. So when that blood sugar crashes down, when the blood sugar is going down, that's hypoglycemia, that's tired, spacey, hangry, all these symptoms where your brain just does not work like it should. Somebody pulls the rug out from under you, you get tired. You, if you're in an office setting, you're going around and grabbing Hershey's Kisses out of the, the bowl of whoever has those, or pretzels, or grabbing some chips, or it's that afternoon lull. A lot of times people think they need a Red Bull or a Mountain Dew, something like that, but that's not it. It's that blood sugar is dipping down there. So you've got to figure out why is that blood sugar having problems? Why, uh, why are you dealing with this? If anybody out there uh, is dealing with this, give me a thumbs up and tell me that you, you know what I'm talking about because it is prevalent. It is absolutely a huge part of our lives is this low blood sugar side of things. So we've got to get it stabilized. A lot of people think, oh, I just need to uh, eat more frequently, but that's not the whole story. You've got to figure out what works for your body and what doesn't. So here's what happens. Blood sugar drops down and the body triggers the adrenal glands. The adrenals are our stress glands cortisol, adrenaline, all of those hormones to kick out glucose out of the liver so we get more sugar into the bloodstream. And so what happens is every time that blood sugar dips, 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 adrenals, adrenals, adrenals. We call this random anxiety for some people. Some, some people say, oh my gosh, uh, I just start feeling you know, anxious for no reason. I start getting sweaty in the middle of the night. They'll actually wake up when that blood sugar goes down low and they're having a panic attack. They're having a sweating episode. They're having a lot of issues that are causing that body to go into this fight or flight state. So let me know if any of you guys have had that, that random anxiety where it can just hit out of the blue. That is usually a blood sugar issue. If you wake up in the middle of the night and can't get back to sleep, that's usually a low blood sugar issue. So what do you have to do? You have to get it stabilized throughout the day as much as you possibly can. And it's not just eat every two hours. You've got to eat the right percentage. You've got to eat the right amount of fat, the right amount of protein, carb, everything at that meal to keep that blood sugar stable, not let it spike up. Because when it spikes up, that's when we crash it down. We pull that glucose out of the bloodstream too much and you overshoot it. So it's usually, that drop is usually secondary to a spike. So just eating every two hours isn't doing it because you're spike and then you eat spike and then you eat. Instead of this nice little sine wave where it goes up and down nice and slowly over and over and over. So hypoglycemia, 
lots and lots of people. I see some people that get down into the 30s and 40s on their glucose. I want people 85 to 110. I've seen 30s and 40s and they're freaking out. They're texting mom, I gotta go home, I can't handle this, I'm freaking out, all those things. So we've gotta stabilize our blood sugar. Just as bad as high blood sugar, low blood sugar causes just as many problems. We know that with autoimmune conditions, uh, that every time that blood sugar crashes, we're going to have problems. We're going to stimulate that autoimmune. So if you have an autoimmune condition, you've got to stabilize your blood sugar. You've got to keep it consistent. Every time it crashes down, you are revving up that immune response and you're destroying more tissue. So you've got to get that stabilized there. So a um, couple things, Grand Junction hypoglycemia, um, awesome. So. Yes, again, everybody, the uh, blood sugar swings are more problematic than just high blood sugar. We've got to get that as stabilized as possible. This affects brain function. So Jeremy Martin's on here. He works with a lot of, uh, a lot of people out there with ADD and things like that. What happens to people's brains when they go low blood sugar? Well, we get tantrums. We get, I have uh, parents come in, they're like, holy cow, I just thought they were cranky or whatever. We tested their blood sugar, they were in their 50s. And they're sitting there having a tantrum and they're 9, 10, 11, 12 years old and still doing that. If you're sitting in a classroom setting, just had a, a young, young man in high school today that came over from Nebraska that we were looking at and uh, guarantee his blood sugar is crashing down, not being able to be as engaged, less uh, in, in motivated about life, a lot of other brain issues because he doesn't eat breakfast, barely eats lunch, finishes it after school. What's that day like of low blood sugar that entire time? very problematic. So we've got to get that blood sugar stabilized, do as much as we possibly can. So uh, if you guys have any questions, put those down below and uh, we'll be answering those over the next few days. But yeah, low blood sugar absolutely needs to be dealt with. You need to uh, know what to do. It's not just, oh, laugh it off and I'm hangry. You've got to fix it. Get that blood sugar monitor, start tracking it, see where it is. This is actually pre-pre-diabetes. Not pre-diabetes, but pre-pre-diabetes because if somebody has these swings long enough, they will become diabetic. So get it fixed now, get your body back, get your health back, and make it a great day, everybody. Take care.